Let's do a sound check. We are on stream. If you are on Twitch, let's see what it sounds like. This is sentence A. This is sentence B. This is sentence C. And welcome everybody to uh, Chief Chat for Ember. We do this every Thursday. Tuesdays are personal streaming days where I stream games and talk about game design and MMO design. And Thursdays are for the game that we are currently prototyping in Unreal 5. And we're going to show you a little bit of that today. I think you can see it already on the screen. I have our white box level open. This is our first conversion to Unreal 5. And it's going to be kind of a working stream today. We're going to be exploring Nanite Terrain. And if you don't know what Nanite is, Nanite is the whiz-bang new feature of Unreal 5, which promises millions, uh, sorry, which promises infinite polygons as far as the eye can see. Yes. That sounds like a lot. We have depleted the world supply of polygons. Uh... That's unfortunate. Uh, they need to grow more. So remember, you know, preserve the rainforest, preserve the polygon forest, because Unreal 5 is about to suck them all up. My name is Mark Kern, otherwise known as Grums on Twitter, and I am a game developer, um, game designer mostly, and writer. Uh, but I do a little things too, like some of the world terrain design in Ember. And I have a storied history with various studios, including uh, probably my biggest stint was as the team lead for the original World of Warcraft, if you don't know me already. I also made a game called Firefall, which was supposed to be a sort of like sci-fi MMO. And for various reasons, um, the investors wanting it to be like, wow, it didn't happen. But we're doing something called Ember now, which is supposed to be what that sci-fi MMO was supposed to be before those meddling investors got their hands on it. And it's crowdfunded. It's backed by you, the viewer. And I wanted to welcome you all to the stream. I'm going to tweet it here in a second so that... Other people can join in. All right. Tweet going out. Awesome. Is it true that the average investor has one of those 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 long mustaches that they, they tweak like an old bad guy in, in the old movies? Well, you know, we had the nine, so and they were a Chinese company, so I think that would be the Fu Manchu beard, you know, they oh, with okay. with the one mole with the long hair out of it. That's that's that would be the evil, <laughs> sinister Chinese villain from when I grew up in Asia in, in Taiwan. Uh, you know, that's what we always had. It was our evil villains didn't twirl their mustaches. They stroked their very long beards. I, I love it. Now I need that avatar for my VTuber. Yes. Yes. Now live on Twitch. To talk about Unreal 5 engine development. And exploring infinite polygons. All right, tweets going out. Tweet is sent. Let's see if we can get a couple more people in here before we begin. All right. So uh, for those of you who are backers, you know that we are creating game and we are mocking it up in this level, which is our white box level. And there are no textures. This is just for prototyping stuff. We have been doing additional graphic um, updates for everything you see in the game including these Omni frames and these characters. These are our old characters. We have new characters. And I think that um, I should show you that we have, you know, this is running in Unreal 5. You can see this on the desktop. It has a new UI. This is an Unreal Engine based game. And we're going to be exploring, uh, and I've never done this before. We're going to be exploring building Nanite Terrain. Nanite Terrain is uh, a feature of Unreal 5 which uses nanite meshes to sort of kit bash a whole bunch of uh, scanned assets usually together from Quixel mega scans. 
and to create a a entire open world level with that and that's that could be pretty tedious because these scans are little pieces so uh, unreal has promised epic has promised that you can create these large vistas with what's called mega assemblies and so we'll be using that technique today yep these are old frames these are in the medium frames they're kind of overexposed right now. I turned off exposure compensation in project settings, but apparently it's still here in Unreal 5. I probably have to go into the, um, the post-process volume or something like that, but we won't do that today. That's not, not our focus. So yeah, this was uh, last week we had the first port of the engine to Unreal 5 and everybody ran it without a hitch, right? Nobody crashed. Nobody, everyone was able to get it to run. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. And frame rates were about the same. It felt smoother for you. Okay. I haven't read your forum post, Zingo, yet. I'm sorry. 30% slower for Scoob. Are you trolling, or is it, was it really 30% slower? And, and Scoob, didn't you have the 880M? You did benchmark. You have on uh, it's it was oh did you run DLSS? Interesting. Okay. Uh, remember we do support DLSS. If you open up your graphics options, you can turn it on. And on a thirty eighty DLSS should just scream. Yeah. Well, uh, I will read it, Zingo. But. You know, so far, I just want to make sure it runs on everything. Obviously, this is a preview version of Unreal 5. They have yet to complete it for uh, launch or fully optimize it. I expect more improvements to come. All right. So, we are in here, and I have put down some Nanite meshes just to start with, but I'm going to show you the whole process beginning to end because we're actually doing it live. I've never actually built a level with Unreal 5 before. So I went ahead and I just put some meshes down and you can see here that the detail is just kind of nuts. I mean, this is this is kind of crazy. And this is all geometry. These are all triangles. There's no there's no normal maps um, aside from, you know, like the the little bump mapping stuff. This is this is all physical terrain. And with physical terrain, you have some interesting problems, which I'll talk about in a second. And you can see that, you know, these are just individual meshes. I can I can click on these and well, this this is a mega assembly that I did uh, for the for the demo. But I'll go ahead and hit, I'll hit play. And remember we're running an editor, so it's going to play pretty slowly. It's loading. But yep, it's real terrain, but it's awfully bumpy. I think it's gonna need some simplified collision because it's a rough ride over this, folks, because it's not faked, right? These are actual, ugh, and then you can get stuck on rocks like this too. So this is the first thing I noticed this morning. I was like, oh, that's gonna be interesting. So yeah, this is a, this is a large map. And the question is, how do we take stuff like this, which is actually smaller pieces than this, and build an entire level that's eight kilometers by eight kilometers? This is a real question for me and Nanite. But the goal for this is not to uh, sort of like create production pipelines. Some people thought that that was a picture in the background. No, this is real. You can fly all the way there. Some people thought that we were just putting a high-res picture on the background. Someone tweeted that at me, and I was like, nope, that's that's for real. That's for real what it is. But you can see how small, th this is a mega assembly. So this is already several scans put together, and you can see just how small it is compared to the terrain. So that's a real question for me. It's like, is Nanite suitable for open world terrain, or will it have to be reserved for, uh, you know, some instances here and there? So, yeah, we are we are in the engine right now. We are in we are in Unreal Five developing Ember Live on stream, and talking about nanite meshes, the insanely detailed terrain you see here. 
And we're going to be building this on stream today. And my idea is just to flesh out this area around here, see what we can do to flesh it out. And then I want to ship it to you guys next week. Now, why would it take that long? If we finished the level today, why can't you play it today? Because we don't know if it'll work. This collision system, uh, I think, is going to be very clunky. I don't know if it's going to generate correct pathing data. So if you call down a thumper on this terrain, I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, we will try it later, though. Well, actually, I can't try it because I would have to generate a nav mesh. And generating a nav mesh for 8 kilometers by 8 kilometers takes a really beefy machine. I need I need Harry to do that. And it's there's no guarantee that uh, the navigation mesh system is going to work with the current collision. We might have to come up with a solution that lets us sort of create simplified collision for these mega assemblies here before we, we, can, we can practically build out anything. But in any case... Our goal is to get these nanite meshes in here because they shouldn't cost you much frame rate at all. We're already in Unreal 5. It's just running the, the new Lumen renderer. Uh, we're not using Lumen Global Illumination, which saves us a bunch of frame rate. Saves you guys a bunch of frame rate. But we don't know how nanite performs. And we're not going to know how nanite performs until I cover a good size area with this stuff and you guys are flying around. So what we build today, you will play next week. All right? So, some people are asking about where is this ground texture from? It's First of all, it's not a texture. Uh, please ban me. It is not a texture. These are these are geometry. This is geometry, with, and it's got a diffuse texture on top. But these are photo scans from uh, Quixel Megascans, which is a very popular library used by AAA developers, indie developers, everybody else. But this is the first time that you could bring a Megascan natively into... Unreal 5 at full resolution. This is like a massively dense millions of polygon mesh that's been imported here. So, yeah, everything here is built by us. Uh, one could argue the terrain here uh, that I just built an hour ago is by by us, but the scans are not. This uh, and But you're going to see this more and more. I mean, the use of photogrammetry in assets is going to become... It's, it's pretty much a standard now if you're doing any next-gen game development. And you're going to see a combination of mega scans, and then the bigger teams, the AAA teams, are going to go out there, and they have their own scanning teams, and they're going to be building scans as well. Martin asks... Martin Solomon on Twitch asks, Is this like the terrain system in Death Stranding? No, Death Stranding does not use... Um, does not use nanite. They do not have this polygon density. So uh, they they use traditional uh, art pipeline, probably with some terrain. This is a height field terrain that I'm standing on right now, this checkerboard pattern. And then this would be the nanite meshes. And I think what's going to happen here is we're going to use some combination of landscape, and they are releasing a new landscape or an improved landscape system for Unreal 5, the next release, you're going to see some combination of this plus embedded meshes like this. I think that's what you're going to see. And I think that's important too because you can't generate this stuff procedurally, these meshes here. I mean, maybe you could whip something up in Houdini uh, to intelligently assemble meshes. Houdini can do a lot of pr interesting procedural things with meshes, and that's something we might have to explore. But I think you're going to see just because this terrain is so vast, right? I think you're going to have to see some combination of height field terrain and nanite meshes. All right, so why don't we get started here? Uh, but before we do, I know that some of you may want to participate in the nanite demo next week because the level we build today, we are going to share with you next week. And... Um, before we do that, I'd like to do some raffles, and I'm going to answer one more question from Bransberg because he's been saying he's asked a million times. But he's asking, will the skins that are being released be available to buy, not in gotcha boxes when the game launches on, on full? Yes, the skins are not just available to buy, they will also be in-game at the what's called the core level. The core level skin is a single color skin, but by acquiring resources in the game, and crafting upgrades to it, you can add the ability to change colors and you can bring it all the way up to what we call a peerless quality skin, which allows you to mix and match meshes on the skins. And there are rarities. So 
rarity, the skins are rare. That means they rotate through. They rotate through both in the game and in the store. So an epic level skin like the one we have up today, if someone could pop that into Discord real quick. Uh, this this skin we just released last week. That's an epic great skin. It has an ep uh, that's an epic rarity skin. I'm sorry, and that means it drops twice a year. That means in the store it'll generally, on average, be available twice a year, barring special promotions and things like this. And in game, it will be available to acquire about twice a year, and not at the same time as the store. They'll probably be staggered. So when when you can grind for them in the game and when you can buy them, will probably be two separate events, or maybe they'll be combined. Uh, honestly, it's going to be whichever one is the most satisfying to our users and uh, is the most profitable because we are a cosmetics driven game. There is no gotcha. Um, what we do do is we do a little FOMO. We had to pick a strategy for monetization. And we thought this was the least evil of them all to keep the lights on and to pay for the servers once the game is released. So you, the game is you buy once, there's no subscription. There's uh, an optional subscription. If you want like a season pass for skins, basically there is a, um, and there are crowdfunded uh, extensions to the game. We're building this in phases. It's an MMO, so it's a very big game, and we're a small team. So the idea is that we are going to publish on Kickstarter. We're going to kick everything off, publish our milestones for how the features will roll out, and then the features get crowdfunded individually. There is not just one crowdfunding for this game. There will be multiple crowdfundings for it for the different features and expansions and DLC content. Uh, whew, that was a lot of information. Okay, so if you want to try this game next week, these builds are available to backers, and we are going to be playing this Nanite level that we're building today, and maybe you get lucky. Maybe you win one of our newcomer pack raffles that we do in our Discord server. I encourage you to hop over to our Discord server right now because we're going to raffle away three packs, and then we're going to get started building some Nanite terrain. All right, Ronan, take it away. Okay, what kind of newcomer packs are you thinking? Are we going for forerunners? I think we'll we'll do forerunners to start off with. All Let's right. do three forerunners. Sounds good. Now, welcome here to our Discord. We're going to give you a few minutes to join up. Some of you are probably over in Twitch and haven't hit the button yet. Please do. We're going to post a link to our Discord if it hasn't been posted already. Oh, looks like it has a couple times. Perfect. Come on over. We're about to do some raffles. And, of course, you want to win the free stuff. Let me check the, uh, let's see who's hopping in here. We got any new people? Any new people? Okay. Got a little bit of a rush here. Come on, guys. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and explain how these raffles work. Now, what you're going to see, our raffles are done by an automated system that was developed by one of our amazing community members named Zevis. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, you're going to see a post from Feral. From Faye, our community coordinator. Underneath that, you see a post from the Ember Bot. Okay. And underneath that, you'll see a little notepad. The notepad will have a pencil on it. It's an emoji. That'll be the one that you click on. That puts you in the running for the raffle. Okay. It's very simple. It lasts about 30 seconds. And uh, yeah, we see who we see who gets lucky. Now, depending on what we're raffling at the time, we will show you what the prize is. In this case, we're about to give off some forerunners, which are uh these really cool packs that give you some cool perks in the game when it comes out. And in the meantime, it gives you access to play our various playable builds. And that's really cool because you get to see a game being developed. Uh, you get to be on the cutting edge of the development. None of those, you know, things that we call a demo that's not a demo. None of those betas that aren't betas. We're talking full on. You're basically <laughs> right here with the devs as they make the game. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a test raffle. See, is, are we still getting hammered? Are new people still jumping in? Where are we at? If you're going to get over here, you better get over here. <laughs> and folks, when you get over, don't forget to click on the chief chat voice channel so you can actually hear us. Now, you're thinking they can't hear me. So why am I saying this? Because I know there's people out there watching and listening that will help guide everyone into this. Okay, so guide them on in. <laughs> Thank you, Shadow. All right. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to do the first one. Now, we're going to do a test raffle to make sure everyone knows how this actually works. A test raffle. 
Now, the test raffle will follow the regular rules of a raffle, but the prize is simply face thanks. Which, of course, is priceless. You can't get it anywhere else. <laughs> All right, Faye, go for it. All right, is everyone ready? This is the test raffle to win my thanks. Get your clicks ready. Set. Go. And please remember, do not post while the raffle is going because uh, everybody needs to see it. And if it scrolls away due to lots of chat, well, it, it would be too hard. Can't do that. Yes, Fluffy's games, three, four runners. <laughs> and yeah, ignore the other uh, the other emojis that people post there. They're just trolling you. Pay no attention. Neo Porter, congratulations. You win. Face thanks. Right, Zalakar, just a notepad. Everything else is uh, basically irrelevant. <laughs> Traditionally, face thanks is also very good luck. I, you know, I've heard that. I've heard that. I think last time we did raffles, the person who won face thanks also won the raffle. So it might be, it might be true. Yes, they did. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do the first of the actual raffles. And this one... We're going to also post a graphic that shows you what comes in a Forerunner pack. And while the raffle is running, I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so Faye, when you're ready. All right, everybody get your clicks ready. On your marks, get set. Click. And there it is, a Forerunner pack. A Forerunner pack is uh, one of the packs from our current promotion. The regular value is 34 95 that's 35 dollars essentially usd you get a founder dropship that's a unique model comes in the blue and yellow skin looks pretty cool you get a forum tag letting everybody know that you're now a forerunner which is fancy you get put on our founder's wall which will be a thing in game when the game comes out sometime down the road here you get access to the pdf design book i really like that one because you get to see the original thought process behind what the game will be and you can compare that to how the game is shaping up and you'll find that it's actually better and one and more wonderful even <laughs> you also get access to the test builds as mentioned and the playable mock-up that will come out around the time of kickstarter and of course a final copy of the game when it comes out fluffy congratulations i do have a question are you actually fluffy or, or would i be disappointed do you have glorious poofy hair Does anybody else have glorious poofy hair? I think glorious poofy hair is amazing. Jedi's a liar. <laughs> I've seen your head. <laughs> That's right. Now what you're going to do is send me a private message right away, Fluffy. <laughs> oh, gee. Yeah, so, so Fluffy, send me a message right away. Let me know that you won a 400 pack. Uh, maybe, maybe we might do that later if we have a bit of a lull. Lull. All right, Faye, let's do the next one. All right. Everybody ready? On your mark. Get set. Click. He's not even in the channel. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, the next one's up. Let's see who's going to win it. Not moose. Short anime here. Hair? An anime? Anime hair? Well, now I'm curious as to what short anime hair is. Shelly, you have bunnies at the office? What? Why don't I have bunnies at my office? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a message to my assistant to give me some bunnies. Saitama has, he doesn't have short hair. He has no hair. Valora, congratulations. You win a Forerunner pack. You know what to do. Send me a private message right away. Let me know that you won a Forerunner pack.
you have kitties and bunnies at your office, Shelly? What what kind of where do you work? What's what's happening? Ah, spiky hair. Okay. I read somewhere that if you have that hair, do you automatically get a harem? I don't know if it's true, but that's what I hear. <laughs> a harem? <laughs> oh, the hair has to cover the eyes. Okay, see, that's that's what people have been doing wrong. Failure to report. Now you have you have poofy hair. Excellent. <laughs> okay, let's do number three. All Remember, right. guys, send me that message. Sorry, Faye. Carry on. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Last one. Get your mouse clicks ready. If you're not here, you better get here quick. I mark. Get set. Click. Right. This is your last chance in this current uh, chunk of them. Fluffy, you are not serious. That is not your name. That is awesome. <laughs> you have the best Embrighty. It's amazing. The winner is Naru. Congratulations, Naru. You win a Forerunner pack. If you can't already, soon you'll be able to jump in the game with us and, uh, you know, help us blow up some Shihu. Yeah. Yeah, blow up the Shihu. Do it. <laughs> Remember, send me a private message right away. Let me know. Let me know that you want a Forerunner pack and give me your Ember ID that you use on MyEmber.com. If I don't have that, I can't actually give you the prize. It'll just sit there floating, 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 floating forever. <laughs> did, did you hear a sneeze? It wasn't a sneeze. <laughs> All right, Grums, back to you. All right. So I have, while we were doing those raffles on Discord, I went ahead and just copy-pasted the terrain around here and adjusted a little bit so you could see a little bit more of it. And I already see, I mean, I mean that's a nice screenshot right there. Like, just like that. This is, this is like, I mean, this looks good. And we haven't even tweaked lighting or anything yet. And I've just, just sort of like thrown these meshes down. And I see some problems already, like these gaps here. And the way that it works is I'm promised by Epic Streams that I can fix these gaps without having to redo my entire level. So we're going to see if that's true in a second. I'm also seeing that this is extremely rocky. Like this is just going to be... I'm going to need something flatter for most terrain, because if I jump into the game now, I'm just going to get caught up on all these rocks. Do the rocks actually have, like, complex collision, that, that it would be a problem, or they will do. you just hover above them? They do, because them? I'm cheating. I'm not creating collision meshes for them. And in fact, uh, when I was watching Unreal Stream, I think they created their own tool to quickly generate collision meshes that approximate terrain. So instead, I'm using complex collision for these which oh. uh, could be very painful in a second here when we start laying down more. But you can see here, it's like, ugh. Oh, God. Rocks everywhere. Cannot move. Okay, and these rocks are huge. I mean, look look at the size of a human here. Whoa, sorry. Sorry for the motion sickness, guys. All right, look at that. That's just, that's just crazy. Th those rocks are actually gigantic. They're boulders, right? But you can see that I'm pretty able to effectively, you know, create a lot of these things. And we're going to keep going here. And I'm going to try to fix some of these issues. For one, I'm going to try to make this flatter so it's a little easier to walk across. And I'm going to try to do it without having to rebuild that from scratch. So apparently this is possible. And again, this is Unreal Engine 5 using nanite meshes and what's called uh, mega assemblies, which are blueprints. Basically, a blueprint is a little code and a little and a little assets mixed together to create something. And in this case, it's very simple. It's just being used to create collections of these meshes. So I'm going to show you what that's like right now. 
there are four content browsers in Unreal. You can see that this is a, the blueprint that I'm placing down. And I'm just going to go ahead and just go to Mega Scans. And then I have to actually create these assemblies in a level. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So what's the plan? How do we utilize these uh, static meshes? Well, while we have the sort of terrain, how do we combine the two? Or will, shall, will one replace the other? Uh, you missed it earlier, Harry. Uh, uh, I don't know yet. This is a learning stream. We're, we're sort of exploring it. Uh, okay, so I have a level here, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have saved my mega collection blueprint, which is interesting. So let's try this again, shall we? Um, first of all, we're gonna need we're gonna need a little bit of light. Oh wait, no, it created that level. Yeah, uh, here's my assembly. This is my assembly area. So whenever you create it, it, it creates a level. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so we talked about this terrain and we said there's some issues with it. One was these gaps that you see here, right? And the other was that these boulders are way too huge. So let's see, can I individually edit it? No, it's a blueprint now. Okay, so it created a merge blueprint and how do I edit it? Can I disassemble it? Can I unmerge them? There's got to be a way. What if I go here? I can edit the blueprint. What if I open the blueprint itself or the level that this assembly is in? So I'll close this out. Again, this is the first time I've ever done anything with nanite terrain. So we are learning on the fly. If you are familiar with Lanite Terrain, go ahead and let me know. Let me know how to break apart this blueprint assembly. Nope, it's not that level. All right, I'm just gonna show you from scratch here. So under content here, we've got mega scans and there's various 3D assets that started to import. No, the blueprint is actually, well, I mean, I could try. I could try to edit the blueprint, but let's go ahead and start from scratch. I wanna show you what Epic has done here. So Epic bought a scanning service called Quixel Mega Scans a while ago, which is sort of the premier scanned asset repository that all AAA studios use and, and, and just really super duper high quality, high polygon assets. And they've integrated it with Unreal 5. And I'm already logged into my account here. And you can see that you can browse and search for stuff. And I've been using the Icelandic assets because, um, well, just because I've used them for the ember level before, and they're familiar to me. But we're gonna just pick some interesting rock formations to use here. This looks pretty smooth. This might fit. So I'm just hit, you can select if you want a low quality, medium quality, or a high quality mesh. We're selecting Nanite because we're in Unreal 5. I can go ahead and all you do is click download. It's right in the editor. You never have to leave. They've made this brain dead, basically. So we're going to import a couple of these. So it's just downloading it now. You're going to see a lot of games made this way. You're going to see a lot of indie games make use of this, particularly because it's you can get really high quality results very, very quickly. And then I hit add here and it's added a new asset here. You can see, uh, let's go ahead and just just grab a couple more of these. 
preferably the same color. And I'm just going for ground right now, ground cover. Later on, we'll, we'll add rocks and boulders to this. It's pulling down these massive meshes. These meshes get compressed. The nanite meshes have a compression scheme to them. So the download sizes really aren't that much bigger. Once you've baked this all off. As a project, it's it's big. Here in the editor, it's, it's, it's massive. Oops, that just crashed the asset there. Okay, that's all right. Let's see what we got here. So I think I've already processed that one. Uh, this one's still processing. So this is a new one. We'll wait, and when that icon pops, it should be ready. This one already looks processed. So, you can see, you, people wanted to see the, the amount of detail here, so I'm just zooming in here. This is really, really super duper close. Super duper. Super duper. This looks like a uh, California beach rock. Like we have these, we have these out on our beaches. I know this rock. Do you really, Harry? No. Oh. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was like, I don't think you. you've, you've been to Iceland. Then again, I don't know. Maybe you have. No, I wasn't. It'd be funny though, if, if, if someone walks along and says, I know this rock, this is by my house. Yeah, so these are scanned. Um, you know, first of all, they start off, Quixel Mega Scan start off, and, and they scan these smaller meshes just with cameras, right? You can even do this on your iPhone now. But what they've done is they've, uh, they have drones now that go out to capture really large cliff faces and things. And they're capturing some really large meshes, like the Utah meshes in the library are gigantic. And those are all drone captured. This one is just a, um, uh, a, a regular photogrammetry capture. So let's see, we got that. We got this one. I think this is the one that we were already using. Yep, I was already using that in the level. And... So what the thing does is just imports like this static mesh sort of package and with the, the materials yeah. and the normal maps. And it creates a material. But it is just a year old static mesh, right? Nothing... No, uh, this is, this is already it. Nanite. So oh. I don't have to convert this to nanite. And converting it to nanite sounds like a big process, but it's really just clicking a box in here, and then boom, you got nanite. But these are already pre-nanite. You can tell because the triangle count is just fake. It says 2,000 triangles. That's not really the triangles in there. Any nanite mesh you open is going to be going to say 2,000 triangles around uh, because it's not really triangles. These are actually, from what I understand, nanite meshes are actually a sort of compressed bunch of, uh, I want to say clusters, which are formed into 2D maps, and then the polygons are generated on the fly by the renderer somehow. I am not a graphics programmer, but these are not like wireframe meshes at all. And basically, you can think of them as sort of like 2D MIP maps. If you're, from, if you're familiar with traditional texturing techniques where you have a 2D texture, and then you have lower and lower resolutions as you zoom out. And it's using these sort of like nanite cluster MIP maps to auto-generate these polygons on the fly. All right, so now I've got some meshes loaded. I think I've got enough to make a flat, uh, make a scanned uh, assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and I have to have a new level for this. And this is, this is really going to bug me. So basically, you'd have to create a new level. And I'm going to call this... Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can even do more than one accurate type. Let's try this uh, mega scan ground library. Let's try that. And we're not going to save that selection. Okay, this is our level. Uh, let's get in just a directional light so we can see what we're doing. Okay, and then let's start dragging in some of these meshes. So under 3D assets, I'm gonna start with um, this rock. 
And then I'm going to, let's bring them all in. Then I'm gonna bring in this batch of terrain, mega scan. These are all mega scan assets that I'm loading in right now. Uh, that patch of ground. And I'm not too worried about the, the color differentials right now. As you can see that after you combine them, they, they really don't. Ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, I like that. That's gonna that's gonna buy us a lot of savings of time. Okay, I got four. Maybe I want one more. I don't like the number four traditionally. I'm Chinese, so I like I like five or eight or things like that. So let's see. Let's uh, go to Mega Scans again. Let's People are probably wondering why that means you don't like number four. All right, the number four in Chinese is the same. Uh, sound as the word for death so it's very superstitious there's some buildings in like in elevators they don't have a, you know how in the US they don't have floor 13s in a lot of elevators they don't have floor uh, fours in a lot of places and the way they say when the, when the when the waiter calls out four guests for, at a restaurant to be seated they use a different word for it than, than the number four it's very interesting all right let's try this one too boom No, this is this is Chinese. Is it the same in Japanese? I had no idea. Yep, two pair. Exactly. <laughs> Why not just change them? Yeah, maybe they should have thought of that thousands of years ago. All right, successfully imported an asset. Waiting for this one to build. The process, conversion process takes a moment. <laughs> there it is, and it just popped. And we can go ahead and drag that into our scene. Boom. All right, so I'm gonna minimize this. Okay, so now we've got all these meshes and my goal here is to create some ground cover, right? So to create ground cover, I need, uh, let me bring in a skylight because these shadows are really harsh. Oops, not there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and assign it one of our maps. And this is the this is the uh, lighting we used for COPA. All right, so I'm gonna take multiple meshes and I'm going to start combining them into sort of like one patch of uber ground cover here. And I'm just going to like randomly sort of rotate and adjust. And my goal is to create a larger patch of stuff by kit bashing, kit bashing is just throwing meshes together like this, a larger batch of stuff so that I can efficiently cover the ground for the ember test map we're making. So I'm just gonna put this here. Uh, this is gonna be a real slow stream, guys, because this is, this is a working stream. So, you know, hopefully uh, you can ask questions. I'll try to pay attention to chat here. Let me pull up Discord so I can see what you're saying there. Oh yeah, you guys are talking about languages, Chinese versus Japanese. All right, and then I'm gonna bring this over here. And this will be like my boulder feature. So I don't actually want it to be, you know, I had it in the, in the sample level, I had it way up here, which was just like a gigantic boulder obstacle for people. So I just want a little bit peeking out. And with Nanite, you don't really care about, about all these overlaps and stuff. Uh, it, they occlude each other really well. So that means that it, it shouldn't draw what's behind these, these mesh pieces. But I just, I just don't want the rocks to be too big. Because if they're too big, you, you can't walk over them. So I just want to use this piece as an accent piece, basically, for these, these pie plates of terrain. Does that rock say preview on the side of it? Probably because the lighting isn't built. Oh. Yeah, so if I go here and I build lighting, I, if I turn this to dynamic, it shouldn't be a problem. So let's go to movable, and then boom, gone. 
movable. Okay, no more preview. I thought it was uh, the rock was scanned like that. That there was uh, for some reason the rock had those letters no. imprinted on it while it was scanned. Y you've never noticed because they've always had dynamic lighting on in our builds. So otherwise, you would have seen a lot of previews floating around. All right, this is my my big bang for the buck mesh. Right, I'm going to get the most coverage out of this and. You know, finding the ideal size is going to be somewhat of a learning experience. All Try right. to scale it. Have, have you tried to scaling it? Oh, no. You, you don't want to scale a nanite mesh because the, oh. the texels, the diffuse, I mean, it's only diffuse here. But uh, rather than, I mean, I, I, you can scale it, right? But rather than do that, you kind of want to maintain the, the density. So uh, what you can do, though, is you can hit transform and I can flip it along an axis. Boom. And then, you know, well, that's that's a little obvious, but you know, if, if I move it here and then I rotate it like that. No one's going to notice. No one's going to notice. And in fact, if you're in our regular terrain system, the textures repeat. So when we build terrain normally in Unreal, you're going to see repeating patterns that we have to hide with little tricks um, that you, you don't have here. I mean, I mean, you have it here with with this sort of uh, setup, um, so it's it's not a new problem, is what I'm saying. It's just something you, everyone always has to deal with. Okay, that looks great, but I know that you're not going to be able to walk over that boulder. I I just need something flatter. I'll save that for a hero piece or something. So just I just want to poke it through, and what you really got to do when you're making these is I'm just trying to hide the gaps, which is it, it's going to be a real pain, right? But you know, the idea is that we're going to hide these gaps here. And we're going to start... Uh, let's see, I already have this piece, this piece. Wait, I know I have more pieces. Okay. So let's just start playing around with these. And so the idea is that you, you create these pie plates these composites, and then you can go ahead and ostensibly um, use them in your in your level once you've made a, a blueprint out of them. All right. Okay, what's this one? <laughs> this this little uh, guy. There's a question whether. The, 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 when you hide the big big iceberg uh, piece under the map, like you're basically only using like well, like five percent of that one terrain piece to to sort of just do the the, the protrusion. Uh, ooh, how will the occlusion calling uh, work with that? Or yeah, because is, is, is it too much I, of my a, understanding a cost? that nanite works really well as a, as occlusion colors because of its 2d nature right because you're, mm -hmm. you're you're easily you know and i would assume that instead of having to calculate which polygons are included you're just calculating it from the 2d cluster representation of it and <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about by the way this is just from there is a know, there's a bunch of visualizations you can turn off uh, turn on i mean wherein the yes the there are so we could we can experiment with that so if i go up here to show and uh, let's see, or do I have to show? Nanite visualization over there at the bottom. Nanite visualization overview. Okay. So you can see here that these are the instances, the primitives. These are the clusters, the, the 2D sort of representation I was talking about. These are the actual triangles. Oh, my Lord. The mask, and this is the amount of overdraw that you're seeing. So I guess there's a What's overdraw? Overdraw is when you have pixels drawing on top of each other. And oh. so it's like redundant calculations for your graphics card. And you don't want too many of those. So I don't know if that's good or bad. It's purple bad. <laughs> but this is the way they did it in the uh, Valley of the The more red demos. or the more bad, wasn't it? I, I think the more red, the more bad, usually. The material ID and material complexity. It's a very simple material. And... Yeah, you can you can see that if you want to see the triangles, this is how many triangles there actually are. This is the nanite representation, the cluster representation of those triangles. 
and uh, right now these aren't instant these these are all different instances interesting I haven't done a lot of instance meshing in Unreal, Harry, so we're going to have to figure that out because I think I have... Th shouldn't this be an instance of this because they're the same thing? Um, well, well, all of them are instances of that one thing, so they're just different instances, right? So I guess that's what what's the point of well, that. They, they, should just... be, they should be color-coded the same if they're the same instance. But they're not. Uh, so. but, well, no. In instance is a, a specific uh, incarnation of a class, of a blueprint, right? So you, what you would have to look uh, something like, uh, you would have to have a different visualization. What this is visualizing are uh, the, uh, the individual, it, it color codes intentionally every single instance differently to visualize the instances. If you wanted to visualize the classes of it, you would need a different visualization, but they don't need they don't do that here. I think material ID is closest to that. That seems like it co it codes. No, that's, um, that's just the, which material it is. That's not the actual. I'm talking about instance meshes in Unreal, which is a little bit different. But maybe when I bring this into the level as as a blueprint, it'll it'll self instance. If it doesn't self instance, we got to figure out how to do that because we do not want to have a bunch of meshes around here that are not instanced. That would be very slow, but we'll see. I mean, this is a learning stream. We've never done this before. So, you know, welcome to the bleeding edge. And the idea is that we create something that actually works for the demo, which I don't know if it will. If it does, you'll be playing next week. All right, so I've got that. That's a pretty decent sized piece, right? So the idea behind it is to create this little glob and have this little glob be, be the thing that you smear around the, the map. Yeah, basically. Uh -huh. So basically, I have to take this, and now I have to actually create a mega assembly out of it. So, yeah. Uh, Mercy, you're right. You can see the triangles are... Are, they're basically, you see the little shimmering effect? I think they're being absolutely, absolutely generated rasterized on the fly here. So I don't know how close I can get to this. There you go. But at least the LOD is. Oh, it doesn't seem to be LODing. It's just a massive amount of triangles. Oh, but the, the nanite clusters are LODing. They're mipping out. So if, you, if you zoom out really, really far, as, as in, you know, several thousand units above it, will, will it just change into one? Apparently not. Oh. Okay. But I know that it is, it, maybe it's just not visualizing correctly because Nanite is inherently LOD, right? Yes. All right. Let's make sure we don't have any gaps, any unseemly gaps, because that's what we were trying to eliminate, and that our ground is relatively flatter than it was before. And we're going to go in and replace those meshes that we had. All right, so I'm going to select these. Once they are selected, then I can go here and I can go to uh, not merge actors. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Create from selection. And then I want to create a packed level instance blueprint. Don't ask me what that is. Uh, then, I, then I'll try to calculate a, a pivot point. And you're better off, you can have it do it automatically, but you're better off creating an empty actor, which is an actor that you basically can't see. There was an empty actor in the end. And then that's a pretty good pivot point. I probably want it to be a little bit lower. Because, you know, I've got weird stuff like meshes underneath here. And I don't want that auto-calculating into some weird pivot point. I want to control that. So I'm trying to find the, the rough center of the object here. Maybe right around there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, select our meshes again. We are going to... And now what you do to create a mega assembly is you create from selection packed level instance blueprint and the pivot is going to be an actor and we're going to just choose the actor that we, where's my actor do i have to have him selected uh, no i have to have him selected 
Okay. One more time. Create from selection. Packed level. Actor. And actor is my pivot. So when I hit this, it's going to create a bunch of stuff. So... All right, and why don't we call this Iceland Ground 2, because we have a 1 already. And, yep, yeah, we'll save it right there. All right, so now I have Iceland Ground 1, and Ice where's, where's Iceland Ground 2? Uh, you only said... Oh. Huh. I guess I guess I what saved it there. over it. Did it rename it one when I wasn't looking? Because I typed in two. Really? Oh. Or maybe I didn't. Did you spot a gap? After all that, did I that making all that? Did you did you spot a gap? Yeah, I think I typed, you typed, I typed one. one. Okay. Well, that's fine. We're replacing anyways. Let's see what happened. Let's load up our level because. You know, so it created a level and it created a blueprint of some kind. Yeah, it created a level, mm. Iceland Ground 1, and it created a blueprint of it. And this is the assembly area which we're in right now. And then we're going to go ahead and hop over to Ember. And we're going to go to Maps. So we're... Maps. And let's go ahead and load up our thumper level here. Yeah, we will save it. Yeah, it looks looks like I got a gap in the last object I placed, but that's okay. I want to see if it, if it actually updated. Oh, no, it didn't update that. So I don't know what this is referencing, Harry, because I overwrote that file, I thought. Let me turn off this visualization, which is really slow. It was in that overview menu, I think. Did I just crash? Oh no, it's building uh, navigation. Stop it. Yeah, you can cancel it out. Okay, so let's turn off nanite visualization. I, I think you just have to click lit on the top there. there you, did you, yeah. And let's turn off the nav mesh. All right, so I don't know what this is referencing anymore. Let's check it out. So this is referencing blueprint. That's interesting. Oh, you have different mega assemblies folder. There's two of them. Okay, so that's the old one. And then I have this one. Ah, okay. So this is our new patch. Neat. Can you, uh, uh, Unreal Engine has these sort of like painting tools for foliage and stuff. Can you load these up into the, the, the sort of painting foliage editor and just paint the world with it? Well, that's an interesting idea because it does accept actors, but I don't know if it works with, with these assemblies. We can try at some point. Today, I'm just gonna do it manually. All right, I think that ground's better, huh? It's a lot flatter. So... Can replace some of this. Oof. This piece is a lot bigger, though. Mm. I, I was just using that to cover a gap. It's like, maybe I need to make my Mega Assembly bigger. Can you make a Mega Assembly out of a Mega Assembly? Out of several Mega Assemblies? I don't know. Let's try. All right. So if I go here and I have to create a new level, I won't save this one. 
And let's go ahead and rename this very confusing directory here, because this is where I. Oh yeah, you you, you were mentioning something about cleaning up stuff earlier. Yeah, I'm not just adding to the mess right now. I, I like the two mega assemblies folder that are just you know there. Yeah, early this morning I was like, Harry, we got to clean up the project. We've got way too many confusing directories and. We're not following our convention, and here I am completely violating it for this. Yeah, it's, it's difficult actually to do it, you know. It's, it's especially like uh, it's 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 more difficult than you think because usually when you go develop stuff, you have to do a lot of experiment. Especially if you're like me, you're just doing, you're just learning as you go. Uh, you do a lot of R and D stuff. You create temporary asset here and temporary file there, and then suddenly the file is much less temporary than previously thought. And suddenly you, it, you, you have just, you know, a bunch of non-guideline following uh, directory structure. It's like the pirate rules. They're more guidelines, really. I would say that uh, a lot of people, their first job in game dev, they are surprised at how experimental and iterative everything is. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are seeing it right now. <laughs> It's like, oh, we got to learn something new. Let's just let's just poke at it with a stick and see what happens. And I mean, look, the source code for Diablo two, uh, w w Diablo one, was a complete mess. It was just, it was just, y you'd be horrified if those of you who work in software development would be utterly horrified at what you found there. Because in Diablo one, they were learning C plus plus for the first time, and uh, yeah, let's just say it didn't go so well. Okay. So let's see. I want to be able to break this up, but you see it's already assembled into a blueprint and then put it back into my assembly area because I created assembly area, the map. And now I want to adjust my mega assembly. It would be really good if there was a way to do that. I don't know what break means. Break level instance. Let's try it. Oh, nothing happened. Okay. There, there was a little widget there when you hovered over the brake thing. It popped up to the left. It says levels. Yep. It, that, that's all it says, though. There's no ex. Uh, okay. Uh, and there, I think that's a button. Yeah. Let's Click. break it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, yeah, I that, think did it, it. Oh, that did it. That did it. It unpacks the thing. <clears throat> Oh. All right, so let's try uh, adjusting this patch, which was the only real problem with it was the gaps and these boulders were way too huge. And let's see if it propagates to the level, because it would be really great if I could edit this stuff mm. and not, um, not have to replace them all in the level. So let's, let's take maybe this piece over here. And let's make sure we don't have gaps. This is this is the pain in the butt thing. And maybe I should turn off the skylight because that will reveal gaps a lot. Ooh, no, I think oh, no, no, no. That was bad. That was bad. Just turn skylight Ooh. back on. Very okay. Silent Hill and all that. Uh, I think uh, now that you've broken it up, though, you would have to basically regenerate the I blueprint. Do. And, and I. I don't think save it, saving it with the same file name will help because Unreal tracks all the blueprints with the same, with the IDs, right? So you can sort of create a new asset that has the same name and then hope all the instances of the asset will be replaced. I think that's where the editing of the blueprint itself comes in. If you actually want to change the blueprint so that instances of it in the world change with it, you edit the actual blueprint because from what I saw, the blueprint itself had the various instances inserted inside it as instant static meshes. So, so you, that probably so you think I should way. modify the blueprint itself? Yeah, yeah. What was it? when you see in the content browser that BP right, Iceland fine. Ground One? Let's do that. I won't save this. Let's go to BP uh, Iceland Ground One. Yeah, just open that up. Just okay. And wait, this is the other one. The um, yeah. Because my naming convention is crap. The, the other BP underscore Iceland ground one. <laughs> you know, they're going to rename this. This is ground two. It's like camera left. No, stage left. And we're going to get a mega assemblies. Uh, mega scans. 3D assets. How come it didn't... Uh, 
Yeah, this is crap organization. Uh, what did the other patch go? Did, did, did breaking it actually delete it? This is the one. Oh. I don't think this is Ah, well, here. no. No, 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 oh, no, wait, no. Wait, There's wait, only wait, two. Wait, 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 wait. Look, look. I have access. Well, but it's weirdly composited. No, I don't have access. Wait, I do have access. You All can right. do some things, but not as detailed, I think. Well, uh, no, I can do a lot. There's only two instant static meshes. Look you at that. It, it, it just... Oh, weird. So I've got this and I've got that. Can I break them? No. Let me try saving on top, Harry. Let's let's try okay. that way because this isn't this doesn't look like it's going to work. Um, it did create a level though. But there's nothing in the level. Mm -hmm. And that's the the old level I created. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do some reorganization here because this is ridiculous. Okay, so I've got these mega assemblies and I've got this one. And I don't want this folder, but I do want that folder. So this folder is going. Uh oh. It's referenced. I thought it was an empty, empty folder. Okay, maybe cleanup waits till later. So where is the one that I made earlier? Oh, which one? The... Ground one. Okay. So I need to go to... Now, where did I put the level for ground ground one? I, I mean, one. the one that you were breaking it in was the assembly area. You were, you were messing around in there before I steered you away. All right. Okay, so we're going to break it now. All right, we're, and we're back to this. Okay. So, like I said, the first thing we're going to do, reduce boulder size. Then we're going to fix gaps. The fixing gap thing is, is quickly becoming a pet peeve, by the way. Like, it's really irritating. Yeah, we've got to hire some unpaid intern to do that. This is just so tedious with these mega scan meshes. Now, I'm thinking about other ways to generate mega scan uh, style meshes procedurally in tools like Houdini. Now, if you look at Valley of the Ancients, they have gaps everywhere. So they this is a problem they, they have too. <laughs> and they have to carefully build these mega assemblies with no gaps. Is there a marketplace kind of uh, thing for the mega assemblies itself? No, not the, not the uh, things that are made of, but some like, you know, Somebody went through the trouble of gluing these things together and, and posted it there, ideally free of charge, for us to just uh, shamelessly uh, appropriate. Well, our terrain's pretty unique, right? Because we've got these lava flows. I've, and, but you can build a lot of this in programs like Substance. And normally in Substance, I'll, if I want it to look really good, I'll import it as a tessellated mesh. I could, I could actually generate a lot of this stuff in substance. Okay, I've got a gap here because these rocks are just going to be too big, so I need to bring in another pie plate of terrain 
to help me cover that. And there's only two in here. So I've only got Yeah, your, your pallet is, is lacking. It is, but it... For, it needs for the, many more rocks. For, but for the purpose of a performance test, I think this, is, this will be fine. We're not trying to go for the full artistic Mac Daddy look. We're just trying to shove. The whole goal of this is next week to give you guys a version of the build that's got Nanite in it and to see how performance is. So we're not going for artistic, you know, glamour here. We're just trying to get to the point where we can get enough Nanite meshes in to make this dense enough. Okay, is this because it's tilted? Yeah, I've got a little bit of gap there, but I think that'll be okay unless I I could sneak in another rock here. So what happens if you try taking one of these larger ones and, and shrinking it and use that to just, just fill whatever gaps there are? Like like shrink it by seventy percent or something like that? I guess I could. You know, I'm trying to think about a reason why why you wouldn't you wouldn't shrink these and you know, I just I just have a bad feeling about it, Batman. Like, I, I, I haven't seen them do that at all, right? Maybe they like imagination. And I'm like, why aren't they doing this? Is it because bad things happen if you shrink nanite meshes? I don't know. But we're going to try it. I just shrank that one, Harry. All right. Okay, now we are gap hunting, folks. Everybody on stream, you can help too. If you see any obvious gaps, oh, we got an obvious gap here, don't we? So what if I rotate you just a little bit and sink you down? There, I think we, we killed that gap. And I'm just gonna go all the way around the edges here, make sure I didn't create any new gaps. I can't tell if you're a gap. You are kind of a gap. You're a pseudo gap. Okay. What a pain. I, I think if you turn off textures on this, you wouldn't see anything because these things don't have wireframe. So I think you have to deal with the textures. Well, let's see if there's another view mode that works. Unlit. Maybe unlit will be... A little easier to spot gaps. Yeah, not really. No, well, I don't know. There, there. Oh, there's, there's a, there's a gap. There's a big one. I didn't see one before. Nope, oh, that's a big piece there. You know, I think I'm just gonna increase this rock outcropping. <laughs> I'm not stealing your idea. I, I, I just forgot to credit it. Which one? The Toshi came up with the, the, the thought, you know, I was just merely relaying the information about disabling texture. Oh, oh, that was Toshi's idea? Yeah, yeah. All, whatever internet points that are accrued from that go to him. Okay, so I have something flatter, I think, hopefully with less gaps. Let's do a 360 around here. Ah, another gap. This is going to kill me. This is where... Yeah, we saved you all this time because you can just use scans, but instead you'll be spending zillions of hours finding all the gaps in your terrain. You're welcome. Of course. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, 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 I think the good thing about it is, is you can just sort of throw... It, 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 you, you can just throw people at this. You know, just throw man hours at this and... and Chinese you know. children, Harry. Let's not mince words. Yeah, some, something along those lines, except, you know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just just make us, like, 500 mega assemblies. And if you have... If there are any gaps anywhere, no, none of you is, none of you is going to eat. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no bathroom breaks good, good, good. until the gaps are filled. <laughs> uh, it works for Apple. Okay, are you are you're suspiciously looking like a micro gap? Oh Jesus! All this for one pie terrain. 
And and we have to create a couple of these, right? For variation. Yes. Okay. I wonder if there is a. Hmm. I suppose you. Well, be, because all, all, already you 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 overuse that canyon one, and it kind of it's kind of visible when when you zoom out, right? You you you, you sort of see well, that canyon pattern repeating, right? Well, so you, Harry, ideally you would have more of a palette. Let's break please, it please up. don't. No, just leave it as it is. No, I'm, I'm now. You said it. Now I can't get it out of my head. So we're gonna go oh, into no. assets here. We're gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take this guy. Oh yeah, but we wanted to try combining oh, that, the different uh, megas. That's the same thing. mesh. That's the same mesh. Um, that, that I just did it again. Where is the new stuff we imported? Okay, we'll take this little guy as our variant piece. And we're just going to use them to to break up some of this surface. Oh, this this You know, I'm going to make them bigger. You're right. Let's let let's go ahead and live large and we're just going to scale this guy up. If you scale it proportionally instead of like this, because the textures stretch out, right? They do, but the texture density is so great that, I mean, look, I, I don't think that's such a big deal there. So I think that. But I, I, th I, th I meant uh, when you change your aspect ratio, when you scale it only in one direction, uh, the textures distort it. Fine, we can we can scale it uniformly. There we go. Yep. Oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> Man, we gotta have an army of unpaid interns. We lure them in with, with promises of glamour and working under the great, you know, ex Blizzard, World of Warcraft, team lead, whatever the hell. You can't say that. And no, here we nobody, go. Nobody wants to work in a Blizzard environment anymore. You can't say that. <laughs> That's great. They, they messed up the, the cloud chasing. Yep. So much for Unfortunately. So much for that clout. Yep. Okay, let's see if I can just find the magic point where the edges disappear. And I can't. That's, <laughs> that's not going to be... We're going to find another place for this guy. I read chat. This complains that nobody reads chat. That's, that's untrue. I, I read chat and steal ideas from it. Lyle says, why not paying interns known as backers? Let's see. All 14 right. an, I don't get 14 an hour in my day job. What are you talking about? Jesus. I, I get like 7 euros an hour. Mostly because I live in a poor country. All right. Let's see. What do we got here? Is that enough breakup, Harry, or where do you think it's a little too regular? Like right around there? Or Toshi's? You could just relay what Toshi says because you're stealing his ideas anyways. Yeah, well, he has uh, no artistic input on this. It's funny because he's, he's the only artist here right now on the team. Yeah, he should be doing this. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. He says it looks ugly. Everyone's a critic. <laughs> Well, very, let's let's uh, turn lighting back on. Whoa, very pop art, I have to say. It's very pink because of the um, environment map I have on. Tell me that's not a gap. Okay, that's not a gap. Well, we have put a lot of work into one mega assembly, but the idea is that you put a lot of work into these epic, calls them carefully curated pieces. 
<laughs> which is another way of saying this will be the pain in the ass part of your project. Uh, but remember that this gets repeated, right? So once I take these pie plates into the world, I'm going to have to look for gaps in the bigger pie plates. So it's like pie plateception or gapception. But yeah, but realistically, this is not something you avoid, right? If, uh, whenever you're doing any kind of terrain. Well, if I'm using a height field, I don't have to worry about gaps. Well, yes, but... All right, so I got these, and we are going to use the power of transformation. Um, create from selection, packed blueprint. We're going to select an actor. Actor 2. Yeah, because you broke it up, and it, it, to avoid confusion, it just sort of incremented the number. Okay, now i got to figure out where I'm going to save it. And it's Iceland Ground 1, so it's going to be saved right over here. Let's see how it does. Yeah, I'm going to replace it. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. But okay, carry on. Is, is it Iceland Ground 2, the thing that you were messing with right now? And then I'm going to replace this. No, the Iceland Ground 1 blueprint is here. Which is the blueprint that you broke up. And here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to save. I'm going to overwrite it. And we'll see if All right. it populates into the level. All, All right. right. So. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. That, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't resave it over the level. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All that work gone because you didn't save the assembly map. Welcome to game development. <laughs> well, no, I save everything. Uh, comp uh, what should we call Incrementally. it? Incrementally. Uh, no, compulsively. So it cannot happen to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I should have had auto save on. Oh, to save won't help you because you just compulsively turn it off every time that the little <laughs> pop-up. I'm going to auto save in ten seconds. You say no, go away. <laughs> that was perfect. We just spent like what twenty minutes on the stream building this one assembly, and then it just and then we tried to overwrite the file of our old assembly, and it just totally bombed. This is a, a preview build, and of course, I, I, I no, didn't no best you practices, Harry. No file naming conventions, no folder organization, and no incremental saving. <laughs> I, 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 I'm entirely, though, because you saved the map in one folder and you saved the blueprint in another folder. I'm not, maybe that did it in. That was, that was perfect for the stream, though. That was amazing. I, I gotta say. Well, no, because. You know what? <laughs> While we're waiting for Unreal to load, let's do a raffle and we're going to do a catch up pack this time. So, uh, Ronan, save me from this hideous embarrassment and uh, let's do some raffles here. Let's do. Uh, let's do let's do two ketchup packs. Ketchup packs. All right, y'all. We're about to do some skins. We're about to give some skins to the lucky winners of the next two raffles. Now, what skins am I talking about? Well, in Ember, every month, if you're a patron, you get a brand new skin, something super cool, super sweet. We have a variety of skins. Some of them are for your guns. Some of them are for your mecha. Some of them are for could be a pet, could be a vehicle, and of course, uh, husbandos sometimes, but most popularly are for waifus. Waifu skins, that's right. Sexy ladies who kick more butt than you can deal with, okay? And we're about to show a picture of that. Faye, do we have the latest, um, let's see, do we have the latest graphic of that? Where are we at on that? We do. Awesome. Share it with these fine folks. We're taking a break, restarting Unreal, and I'm seeing if any of my work was salvageable. Uh, meanwhile, join our Discord and make sure that you follow us on this channel. Every Thursdays, we stream Ember development, or we actually have gameplay tests where you can jump in on. And on Tuesdays, it's my personal stream where I talk about MMO design. And I play games, anything from Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I think I might check out the new Star Citizen patch next stream. We did fishing last time, so come join us. It's a good time. But right now, it's raffle time in Discord. So hop on over to our Discord channel. Now, who is not here already? Let's see what we got. Who's, who's jumping in? 
Okay, we got at least one person, two people. Okay, come on, folks, get on over here. We're about to raffle off the skins. <laughs> and I've posted the skins again over in May Lobby Media for those that want to take another look. Thank you, Faye. Uh, Kraken, uh, potentially yes, <laughs> but that would that would be pretty a pretty specific scenario. <laughs> okay, it looks like everybody who was going to jump over has vo has jumped over. So let's do it. Let's do the first skin pack uh, raffle. Now, folks who are new here, let me explain it real quick. Uh, raffle, you're going to see a sentence by Faye. Underneath that, you'll see a sentence by the, the uh, Ember bot, which is, you know, automated. And then after that, uh, under that, you'll see a little notepad emoji with a pencil on it. You're going to want to click on that emoji that will put you in the running for the raffle. So don't miss it. And uh, if you hit it twice, it'll take you out of the raffle. So be careful with that. When you're in, it will turn blue. So you will know. And then, of course, sit back, cross your fingers, cross your eyes, cross your marbles, whatever it takes to get ready. Okay, Faye, take it away. And that's what the emoji looks like. Only click on that one. All right. Are you guys ready? Yes, Newsle, there really is a system called OPAI. On your marks, get set, click. There it is. And please remember, do not post while the raffle is running. So everybody has a chance to see it. And the winner is Amaran. Congratulations. You're going to get all the skins from previous months. It's going to be quite amazing. <laughs> all right, let's do another one. All right, everybody ready? On your marks, get set, click. Kelly, if you win a ketchup pack, you, you get specifically the ones from that, from the, that come with that date. And then if you win another ketchup pack, you basically just get whatever additional ones have come out since the time that you won. Critical. Congratulations. It's a critical hit. Good job. Or is it a critical win? Oh. All right, Grums, back to you. I refuse. Things are not going well, folks. We had a level editor crash. And I, in a fit of, you know, in a fit of frustration, I've decided to just uh, go ahead and Reorganize the folders, delete all the old meshes, and we're going to try this from scratch. Did I just crash again? <laughs> I just tried to delete a folder. I did save this time, so hopefully it will be okay. Uh, but the editor, I think, just bombed out again. I've never had Unreal 5 crash this much before. I'm just waiting to see if it recovers. How is everyone today?
Yeah. Yeah, welcome welcome to the game development stream where nothing goes goes right. That's and in effect that should make it more entertaining, except it's just really mind numbingly boring. But we've been playing with nanite terrain. And yeah, Unreal is is completely unresponsive here. They have chat over the overlaid over the stream, so I know. Yeah. So at least it's hiding the frozen Unreal editor. Which I'm going to end right now. I have ended you. I'm relaunching it. This is this is uh this is actually not as bad as yesterday i was learning blender because we're we're moving our pipeline over to fusion 360 and hopefully blender and so i put in a bunch of hours yesterday on blender and i ended up not saving my work i overwrote some file and i blew it away and i don't have it anymore so that was really that was really special after hours of work today thankfully is is nowhere near that bad <laughs> at least not yet <laughs> okay so what I've been trying to do here is um, okay this stuff is here so whenever I touch these files Harry something goes bad and I remove, oh, no. and I remove references from it so if I load up our core map here our white box thumper map yeah, I think he corrupted something by, uh, so by I, saving. I really want to clean it up, so I'm just going to go, like... So I've deleted all references to the the actors here. There's no mega assemblies here mm -hmm. whatsoever, right? And then I'm going to go in, and I'm going to try to clean this up. So I've got... And I'm trying to figure out, so assembly area is where I built the stuff, right? So if I open this up, um, it's empty right now. So and then if I open up Iceland Ground, uh, there's stuff in here, but there's no light. Interesting. So if I drop a light in here, should I see something? Wasn't that empty before? That's what I thought. That's what I thought, Harry. Uh, just uh, change to unlit. Don't, don't bother with the lights. Just change it to unlit. All right, we'll get rid of that. All right, so this is Iceland Ground 1. So what I so, want to do... So this is the thing before it crashed, right? This, this, this is, it actually saved the map. Or, or you know, the, the map was saved successfully. Yeah. I'm going to delete the assembly area, which is the map that I created. And that worked. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to um, delete this ground library thing, which I also created, because I've got this now, right? So let's see mm -hmm. if this is populated. Uh, let's save this. And let's see if this one is populated. Okay. Interesting. This is the one we were working on. It just didn't save. Okay, so I that's that's good. We want to keep that. I don't care for this. I'm going to delete this one, which is the one I created. And we're just going to leave this as is, but we're going to move these into the assemble directory. I'm going to keep all of it in one directory. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, let's save all. And let's move them and hopefully it creates okay it's make appears to have moved it okay okay and my naming convention aside we have ground one and ground one so we're going to rename this ground two you probably delete the blueprints and try to regenerate the, the blueprints after you're done with the map well, I can't because these aren't generated from 
Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I can. Maybe I can regenerate it from these levels. So let's try deleting mm. the blueprints. And let's rename this. And I called it NSM for Nanite Static Mesh. This should probably be NSMA, Nanite Static Mesh Assembly, or Nanite Assembly. But NA, I feel like, stands for something else. This sounds like a government institution or something. Uh, we're going to get fined by them. <laughs> You're not OSHA compliant. These file names are terrible. Mm. Okay, so I've got those two. I'm going to delete this empty mega folders. Um, I'm going to save everything. And then we're going to delete this mega assemblies folder, which is empty. Okay. All right. Save all. Now we are going to recreate our actors. So we're going to go into... Um, let's do the easy one. Somebody said that they spotted... Oh, wait. This is ground two? That looks like ground one. These look the same. Uh, do they? I mean, look, this is this is basically two different meshes here. So you got yes, and this one. Oh no, this is the, oh, the right. one we're working on. Okay, this is this this is grant. This is the this is the one here. with the yeah the flavored one with the third mesh. Then. Um, I'm gonna nuke this one because it's not used anywhere. Okay. Well, neither of them is used anywhere. And I'm going to rename this one because it's going to be the first one. All right. And we're back. So this looks like the terrain that we carefully edited. It looked like it's saved. All right. Looked like it, it got this far. These are the little the, the round pieces, I think. Yep. All right. So we're going to save all. Save frequently. And we're going to select all of our meshes here. And hopefully this creates the blueprint. And we're going to create it in the assemble folder. So going to hit create from selection. Packed level instance blueprint using the actor as our pivot point and we're going to go back to mega scans so first it's saving the map right Keep yeah that so in mind. now we have to have a map so what should we call it if we because it then it empties this map right so I i'm not sure it, uh I'm, I'm just going to name it auto just so that we know it was auto generated mm-hmm uh, auto Iceland ground one. So now it's saving the map. And now it wants the blueprint name. And the blueprint name, we're going to get rid of auto. And it's just going to be called Iceland ground one. Actually, we should technically keep the N and A. And then we're going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so. What's interesting is oh. this is NA. If I load up auto, what do I see? Um, and let's not save this because this is assembled already, right? And I want to keep a master copy, maybe? Or uh, no, let's save it. Okay. I see. Uh, so it so it basically created. So it packed. Uh, the stuff, the pa they packed the instance mesh meshes, created the blueprint. In that map that you were in, it created, it replaced the selected meshes with the blueprint. With the blueprint. So if I want to and, edit yep. the instance of this blueprint, I should just edit maybe auto Iceland ground one? Yes. Well, then how do we, okay, let, let, before we get that It far. seems like you would, you would keep creating new maps if you try to add, the, you know, with every edit. Right. But what we want to try is to place this into the Ember map, change it, 
mm -hmm. the, and then see if it reflects the change. So let's go yes. out again. We're, this is called workflow discovery. We're trying to figure out how to, what the workflow is here for nanite-based terrain. And it's, it's what we got for stream today, folks. We can leave it on lit. Okay, so we're going to bring in our little blueprint guy. And we're just going to do a test here. So real quick. I think people want to see it lit just because it looks so much better. Just for you guys, we'll do it. We'll do it lit. All right, so we have this mesh, and hopefully we are gap-free. And what we want to try to do is we want to change this mesh. So I'm just going to add, let's import a big, I don't know, big rock and just put it in the middle of it. So it's really obvious that we changed it. So I'm going to hit save the map. Please right click it. What do you want me to right click it for? I mean, that is gorgeous. And do we have any gaps? Do we, did we successfully, I mean, I know there's an edge gap here, but that's fine because we'll insert other meshes into it. Yeah. Uh, we, right click the mesh or the blueprint. Why does he want to do that? I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe there's a, there's a setting that we missed. Like the ed uh, the edit uh, of the blueprint, that the just ports you to the blueprint, and editing the blueprint doesn't. Uh, it, it packs. It somehow compresses the static meshes into just arbitrary instance static mesh uh, components, right? right? So you cannot achieve the same level of editing capability that you had before you you packed it, right? Before you, you know, moving all the stuff around. Yeah. So. Okay. How walkable uh, is this now? By the way. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I turned on collision for everything, by the way. Okay, that's better. I mean, these... We're able to walk over this terrain better. Mostly better. Yeah, the spaz... The spazzing out is, is is not good experience either way. Even even if it, you you can't traverse it, uh, the, the 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 omni frame you know spazzing up and down. So you're saying the white the white boulders have to go. That's what I'm hearing. Let's dynamically alter this or, terrain. Or simplify collisions. Simplified, but yeah, sure. Simplify collisions would probably be the better way. Uh, right click break easier way of breaking the selected asset. But I don't want to break it in here. I don't want to break it in here. What I'm trying to do is, let's say I've got 50 of these all around my terrain. I don't want to go around breaking every single one. The whole idea of this workflow is that, oh, we found a problem with this base mesh, this, is, this mega assembly. We need to fix this mega assembly and it's got to repopulate the entire level. So like, for example, if I just, I just, I just copy this a bunch of times, right? I don't know why it's dynamically trying to recalculate nav, Harry. Mm -hmm. Just to just to make life painful. Yes, the navigation mesh is is, is that is not stat to static. It's stat to dynamic so, modifier only, but it's still trying to recalculate on the fly. Here is gapception. Neat. 
Okay, so now we have two instances of this, right? So yeah, I could go in here and I could break this one, but then I would break my mega assembly in the level, which I think defeats the purpose of having mega assemblies everywhere. Although it'd be interesting to see what happens when you actually, well, if one of these, uh, when you break one of these, specifically one of these that are inside the world, I wonder what happens. Well, I think it would it would it would replace the blueprint with its component meshes, but I don't I don't want to mess around with that mm. right now because. Uh, we just want to see how we can replace one of these things because it should be possible to yes. just change the blueprint or replace it and then everything should just work, right? So um, what I do want to check to see if these are instance meshes. These two should be an instance of each other. So if I go yes. to uh, Nanite Visualization and turn it on, and let's just look at uh, instances. Oh, interesting. So right here are instances up here. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, there are no instances. I don't know if I'm reading that correctly or not. Maybe I'm maybe not. And then I've got I've got some overdraw here, probably from the meshes underground. So maybe it's not occluding it. Or maybe it is. I don't know. We'll see. But this is the way that they built theirs, so it can't be can't be wrong, can it? Uh, yeah, you would need the hundreds of thousands, yes. But the idea is that this is efficient somehow, and it should just work. It should just work. <laughs> Epic promised us. So, Harry, uh, yeah, er, uh, what I was talking about earlier on stream is I think we're going to have to ultimately use a combination of landscape plus um, mega, uh, plus these scans, plus these uh, nanite assemblies. I don't think it's practical to do the entire world sheet covered in nanite mesh like the demo. Oh, shoot, there's a gap. So, we'll, but we'll see. I mean, that, that's part of the discovery process here. Yeah, I'm not going to find a happy medium here with these two. I just have to sort of like live with this sort of thing. Let's go ahead and make another copy of this guy. Let's rotate it. And so if you look at the Valley of the Ancients demo by Epic, it's just a ton of these assemblies scattered everywhere. And I share your concern, Giga. I don't think it's practical to do a vast open world game this way, but maybe maybe there are things we can do, like Harry was alluding to mega assemblies of mega assemblies as a potential thing, right? But then, I mean, can you imagine finding all these gaps? So if we were able to make like a gigantic mega assembly of this stuff, then, you know, maybe we could cover kilometers of terrain more efficiently. But if you look at the Valley of the Ancients demos, they have gaps everywhere, everywhere. All right, let's save it. Toshi had a good idea. He never has good ideas. He always wants to, like, get rid of the navel and flat his justice. Okay, we are saved. Let me turn off overview here. We're going to go back to unlit for this. Open up our content browser. Okay, so if I just open up the blueprint, I can't seem to edit that. I mean, we could try again, but I don't think it, I don't think it worked. Uh, suddenly, I'm wrong. I think what's happening is that each of the different uh, palettes 
sort of palette rocks, types of rock that you use has its own instant static map. Yeah, they're grouped as one. All right, so that's not going to work for us. And there's no right-click break on that. So I think we've got to go back to the, do we go to the auto-generated level? That's not going to mm -hmm. work, is it? Uh, yeah, we're going to save white box number. All right, maybe this will work. So we were finding these rocks still way too annoying, so we're just going to like make them tiny. I put in something very obvious as, as well, so that we don't have to take magnifying glasses and figure out if it actually worked. Like a 90 degree rotated rock protruding from the middle of it. I'll just make a, uh, yeah, we could do that. So let's stand this guy vertically. Yep. Yeah, very nice. Okay. And let's, let's make, let's go ahead and all right, so now we got this. We have modified our terrain. And we want to see if it propagates into the new level. So it's going to generate another auto level, Harry. I don't know how yes. I feel about that. I mean, that's kind of weird. But we, we try, right? Yes? On the name of yes. experimentation. Create another packed level instance using the actor as a center point, And we are going to hit OK. And we're... N so I'm going to call this new map Auto Iceland Ground. <sighs> this is ground one. What do I call it? Uh, ground one version two. I'm going to do, it's the second auto-generated map. So, uh, actually, you're right. It is version two. You're, it is version two. So I should do this as two. Okay, Harry, here goes the map save. And then it wants to know what blueprint it is. I'm going to save it over yes. the existing one to see if it replaces it. Okay. It yeah. didn't. Why? Where did my 90 degree flat rock go? Well, let's take a look. I don't see it. Scandalous. Hmm. So that's not the workflow for that. Okay, maybe we'll look at look that up. I know there's a way to do it. Too much R and D for for this stream. Yeah, I think so. But it is actually the time for the <laughs> Toshi's file name is incredible <laughs> in Discord. Auto Iceland Ground One V two B Final Three C Final Two. <laughs> That's our new naming convention. All right, guys, we didn't get too far this stream. I'm gonna look this up about how to dynamically tweak the assembly meshes that have been created. Uh, but that's the stream for today. I try to keep them to two hours so we can get back to doing useful stuff uh, plus time to eat. I got to eat. So uh, thank you all for joining me. I know it was a, a different kind of stream. Let me know if you like seeing this sort of behind the scenes development or not. We can do more of it or if you prefer the other ones where we just jump in the build and talk uh, in general about the game and show you new concept art and things like this. Um, okay, Nosigal loves this. Okay, uh, Misery loves this. I don't know how to pronounce your name, Misery, so I just renamed you. Sorry, you know how it is. That's the tradition in our server. And we will come back with, and if I get this going, maybe I'll, I'll do another bonus stream where we actually have a more productive workflow and we actually build out the level and you, the community, can tell me where to put stuff. How about that? That would be kind of fun. It's like, go ahead, put a rock there and, I'll, and you guys can fight over it. Okay. All right, guys, uh, we will get this ready and we will ship it out to you guys next Thursday. Obviously, we got a little got our work cut out for us. And if you spot a gap, don't report it. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> All right, guys, take care, everybody. It's been wonderful. See you later.